Previously on Metal to Metal, USA Basketball at the World University Games. We met the coaches and players of the men's and women's USA basketball teams as they prepared for their Serbian journey at the U.S. Olympic Training Center in Colorado Springs, Colorado. We learned some things about the coaches and players we didn't know and some things we did know. In this episode, we join the team at the flag raising ceremony, learn a little more about Serbia, visit the U.S. Embassy, and get a taste of the opening ceremonies. Then we'll turn our attention to the game action as the teams begin tournament play. Medal to Medal, USA Basketball at the World University Games. This is the story of premier coaches and all American athletes as they suspend their current lives to lay it all on the line for their teammates, their coaches, their schools, and their country. Men's National Team Director Sean Ford has helped select the USA basketball teams for the past 10 years. This year is no different. How's camp been so far? Uh, camp's been great. And, you know, uh, now we're kind of the intensity of the camp. Uh, we're reaching a great point now that we're down to 12 and guys are not competing for spots on the team but competing for minutes. The rule differences, do you see that affecting play much for our kids anymore? You know, it's, I think it is a little bit. You know, I think nowadays really the real difference is timeouts. You know, yeah. the fact that they can't call them and you can't stop. That's really the, the main difference that affects us. You know, you'd like to think that we could take advantage of the ball in the rim a little more and things like that. That's the real difference. But I think it's a little bit of the style of play and the skill level um, and the unselfishness that we have to prepare for. Um, the refereeing is, it's different. You know, so those are the adjustments that I think you have to make. The 2009 World University Games are poised to be particularly you know, we, challenging we got, as you, the collegiate all stars the take on seasoned club professionals they, from strong you know, international squads. And, and, uh, basketball, they, a lot of demands on these player, these coaches' times, and you know it takes a whole year to run a program, not just during the season. But uh, you know, I think it just shows the passion they have for USA basketball, representing their country, and having the opportunity to work together. But you know, w with other head coaches, but. You know, the coaches, it was kind of like some of them said yes before they even knew the dates. They just said, yeah, I'd love to do it. Tell us something about USA basketball that, that the normal public don't, doesn't know anything about. You know, I think one thing is that any person that plays for USA basketball, we're always their second team. You know, and, and we have to, we instill a lot of pride. We try to have them instill a lot of pride, but, you know, every, they're, Every person who plays, whether it's high school, college, or professional, we're always their second team. And same with the coach. Serbia and Serbia is going to be very, very tough. But you know, the European countries in Europe are very tough as well. Uh, a lot of passion. They'll have crowds there, and you know, we'll have to go against a lot, a number of factors. The 2009 World University Games are poised to be particularly challenging as the collegiate all-stars take on seasoned club professionals from strong international squads. When we return, we find Serbia, a country with incredible history, and follow Coach Ryan as he establishes a routine in the athlete's village. The teams left the U.S. Olympic Training Center focused on the challenge One, two, ahead. Three. Let's go. We join team manager Matt Ryan as he travels with the Team USA across the globe to Belgrade, Serbia. Morning, 
one more hour, so be there. I'm going to my hat. The Republic of Serbia is located at the crossroads between Central, Southern, and Eastern Europe. Serbia has many neighbors with eight bordering countries. Serbia had clear goals to host the 25th Summer World University Games. One, to showcase its beauty and growth. And two, demonstrate itself worthy of candidacy into the European Union. Situated on the confluence of the Danube and Sava rivers, Belgrade, meaning White City, is the capital and the largest city of Serbia, which makes it the natural choice for the epicenter of the games. As a strategic location in Europe, Belgrade is a city that has seen more than its share of conflict, having witnessed over 115 wars. Through its adversity, Belgrade has emerged as a dynamic and vibrant city with friendly people and around-the-clock excitement. While the organizing committee welcomed our teams with open arms, the athletes and coaches would soon learn the confines of the arena would not be as inviting. Coming from some of the best programs in the country, the USA players and coaches are much more accustomed to five-star lodging than life in the village. Open to the experience, everyone adjusted well while meeting new friends from diverse cultures. Coach Ryan showed he was as game as anyone. He took a small, non-air-conditioned room, sharing doors with the assistant coaches. While the organizing committee and volunteers tried to accommodate the unique requests of its international house guests, Coach Ryan continued to maintain his daily routine back home as he struggled to find a hot cup of coffee. Oh, this is cold. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, here, do, you, do you have something to heat it up with? Do you have like a microwave? Coach Ryan would continue to search for a more reliable cup in days to come. But for now, he rejoined the rest of the team as they prepared to witness the raising of the U.S. flag. How you doing, Coach Flo? Hey, I'm doing great. How, how's the day looking today? The day is beautiful. It's great to see all these different countries here. Isn't that great? We've got Estonia, Italy, Greece, and of course, In one USA. spot. In yeah. one spot. That's, that's cool. Uh, it's just a great experience, you know. Opening ceremony. Everyone looks like they're ready to have fun. <laughs> Otherwise known as the Universiad, derived from the two terms University and Olympiad. Universiad Belgrade 2009 is the greatest event for Serbia this year, especially due to the fact that we're hosting more than 100 countries of the world. Therefore, we are more than happy to welcome all of you in the heart of this summer Universiad, the University Village. Over 100 college-enrolled student-athletes between the ages of 17 and 24 represented Team USA in the 2009 World University Games. Many were on hand to watch the raising of the U.S. flag. Coach Ryan took a moment with the head of the Team USA delegation, Dr. Gary Cunningham, a basketball man himself, as a player and assistant coach with John Wooden, and then head coach at UCLA, to compare coaching notes. Coach Charlie Turner Thorne appreciates the opportunity given to her team. Yeah, good. Kind of get, get things so getting ready? We're ready. All right, good. Dr. Gary Cunningham exchanges gifts with the mayor of the village. Gift giving is an important culture crossing event at international gatherings.
When we return, we'll march past the opening ceremonies and into some early pool play game action. International games of this scope always include ceremony and tradition. One of the greatest of these traditions is the election of the flag bearer. For the World University Games, the coaches and players of Team USA picked Alexis Gray Lawson to represent the United States. Gray Lawson's father was recently diagnosed with prostate cancer. My dad taught me how to play basketball. He was my high school coach, Alexis said after learning about the honor. I told him I get to carry the flag. He's so excited for me. I'm glad to see him happy. Similar to the peace sign in the U.S., the familiar three-finger salute welcome has political and religious intonations. Oh, what did you just learn? What is, what is that? And what does that mean? I don't know. It like represents their country, I guess. Okay, so that's a good thing. It's a good thing. The salute was popularized during Parade of Nations at 2008 Summer Olympics when the Serbian president welcomed the Serbian Olympic team with three fingers. The U.S. team was among 121 other countries in the Belgrade Arena for the Parade of Nations. The diversity of cultures was on display for all to see. The colors of the flags and the stories each culture represents paints an interesting contrast when seen all together. In order to stage an international competition of this scope, the organizing committee utilized over 60 venues and recruited more than 10,000 volunteers and attaches from around Serbia. The lead attaché for U.S. team was Milan. The attaches were instrumental in inter-Serbian communications. Following the opening ceremonies, it was an attaché that tipped off the team about an exclusive invitation to attend the U.S. Embassy's 4th of July celebration. Our Serbian host, Liliana, spoke exclusively with the president of FISU, American George Killian, about the event. Uh, could you please tell us a little bit about the games? How is everything going so far? Wonderful. We had a great opening ceremony last night. Uh, in fact, it was magnificent. And as long as you have a good opening ceremony, uh, when the games begin, like today, uh, more and more people will come. And uh, when we are finished, on the July 12th, and we have the closing ceremony, we will say Belgrade 2009 was a huge, huge success. So what do you think about Belgrade? Do you enjoy Belgrade? Yes, very much. I, I've been in and out of Belgrade so much in the last two or three years, I feel like I'm a half Serb. Well, wow, that's great. She also caught up with the head of the U.S. delegation. What are your expectations from this university aid? Well, uh, you know, I, I guess I would change that and say my hopes. hopes. My, my hopes is we'll win a lot of medals. And, uh, you know, I think we've, we've brought a very competitive team. We're going to compete in 11 sports. And I, I'm hopeful that we will win a lot of medals. And if we do, then... Um, that's one expectation. Uh, another expectation is I want, I want our, our athletes and our administrative team to have a good cultural experience, learn about this country, and uh, you know, meet other people from other countries and make friends. As the dignitaries were exchanging the pleasantries, both USA basketball teams were focusing in on their exhibition games and the start of pool play. When we return, we'll jump into game action while learning more about Team USA. Both coaches gave inside access into the minds of what it takes to motivate student athletes at an elite level. We're switching! Switch in, switch, switch in, stay Robbie, good. Switch back, get around, good, good, good. Yeah. 
Coach Turner Thorne breaks down the women's team. Guys, you can't just let the post get it. We gotta take passes away. That group that was just in, we need more pressure. Okay, DMAC? To get acclimated to the international game, the men's team was invited to play in three extremely competitive exhibition games prior to the opening ceremonies. They would beat both Russia and Canada in close contests, but lose to the home favorite of Serbia. Serbia won the game 98-82 in front of a packed house. After the game, Coach Ryan said, Tonight's game was exactly what I thought it would be. They sent a message. They are bigger and stronger inside. It's a different game, and for some of our guys, the extra step really hurt. Get back and play D. Let's go. The game would prove to be a wake-up call. For a chance to medal, the men's team would need to use their diverse talents and medal to play as one. When we return, we follow the men and women into the opening round. We're here with Quincy Pondexter. Thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you. Tell us a little bit about the game. Uh, it was a European basketball game. Uh, I think our team's doing a great job of getting adjusted to how they play over here. and um, We're just fighting through and learning as we go. So how did you like the atmosphere? I liked it a lot. I mean, even though it was against us, I mean, you know, I'd rather it be with us. But nah, it was it was really good. I mean, the fans are, are, are good here and they love basketball. And I'm sure it's going to be crazy if we meet them in the finals. When we return, we follow the men and women into the opening rounds. While the men got a taste of the uphill battle they would soon face, the women were in full stride as they looked forward to start a pool play. And what's going well for the team right now? You know, I think they're just coming together. They're they're. Um outworking teams. I think a lot of things are going together and um, it's just been an overall great experience. You know, I think these players have really taken to heart representing USA, what it means. You know, you're living in this village in a dorm setting and not eating your normal food and they're not complaining. They're just working hard and, and you know, really, really anxious to get this done. And tonight we just came out aggressive. You know, we wanted to be the one, the team that set the tone tonight. Right. And you guys have been favored throughout this competition. How are you guys staying motivated as a group? Um, just as being collegiate athletes, you know, just us taking it one game at a time and not really looking forward, you know, just focusing on the game that's, that we have ahead. In the opening round pool play pairings, the women tipped off against Great Britain, France, and Serbia, while the men were seated against Finland and South Korea. The women entered pool play without their top prospect, Maya Moore. Maya injured her knee during the friendlies and erred on the side of caution by resting and recovering. During international basketball pool play, it's all about the scoreboard. Teams need to finish in the top of their pool to advance. And by the way, score differential matters, which does not always breed good sportsmanship. Understanding the importance of moving on, both the U.S. men's and women's teams left no room for chance by outscoring their opponents by an average of 42 and 51 points, respectively. The USA squad opened pool play with an 87-40 victory over Finland. The defense held Finland scoreless over the final 8 minutes and 50 seconds of the game, while the offense remained balanced as all 12 players scored points. Celebrating the 4th of July in style, the USA men put on a fireworks display of their own as they rolled past South Korea 113-76. to it was a well-balanced team effort that once again saw all 12 players score, including seven in double digits. The women's team opened its tournament play with an impressive 85-point win over France, making the statement that they are the team to beat. The women's team again dominated all four quarters in its second game, this time outscoring Great Britain 93-59. The final game of pool play seated the USA women versus the host team of Serbia. 
The women secured their spot in the second round by defeating Serbia 84-50 and advancing as Group A's number one seed. In the next episode, the games get more intense as both the men and women's teams enter the second round and fight to advance. We look forward to seeing you next time on Metal to Metal, USA Basketball at the World University Games.